There it is, it's patch 725, and you just got a character of 110, fresh new leveled up, and you're trying to figure out what do you do with this character, how do you progress, how do you gear. My name is Darren, and in today's video I'll show you what I do with my ult in the patch 725, and should be applicable for other patches unless a better system comes all around. A lot of you guys asked me what do I do, how do you gear, so I decided to use old footage that I collected, and I was going to make a video for it, and I thought it was a bad idea at the time, but... I think it's a perfect time to bust out some old footage from an older hard drive and make a video on this. So this is what I do, this isn't the best method in general, this is just simply what I do with my characters as a fresh 110. First things first, if it is an alt and you already have a 110 main, use your order resources and hopefully you have enough to get yourself at least AP research and order resources for your alt. If you get research, it means all the AP you get now will make it that much faster for you to catch up to everybody else and more value out of the AP you get as soon as you go out and start doing world quests and such. Give yourself as much order resources as you can from a vendor on the corner because that will help with the order hole upgrades. But if you can't do that, then ignore this part of the video altogether. There are a lot of benefits to the order hall research, and especially one of them is when you get second legendary, so you can equip them as soon as possible, giving you a lot more item levels, and you will have a guarantee for first two legendaries that are spec specific or non spec specific. So you will have a guarantee of two legendaries at least for your character, and that's 970 item level in patch 725. In future patches, it'll probably be even higher item level, as well as other things like sending your followers on missions and be able to get more loot and AP and gold out of it. Now the very first thing I did, which is going to be a little bit challenging if you don't have any gear, is doing the Broken Shore scenario. Just unlocking Broken Shore from the bat will allow you to get a lot of your gear for your character with the Nether Shard farming. I would still argue that Nether Shard farming is probably the f best way to get your gear, especially if there is an invasion up and about where you can get a ton of Nether Shards and catch up with gear. So doing this first things first is probably the best thing you could do for your character is unlocking the broken shore which you'll be able to find in Dalaran from Khadgar. It should give you a quest line so just follow the quest line and begin the event. Now with this event it's gonna be fucking difficult for you to get yourself up and running because you have no gear, you don't deal enough damage and you can't speed through the content. So the best thing to do if you're somebody who is let's say inexperienced or doesn't really know how to play this new character that you made is take it as easy as possible and follow the NPCs because eventually they'll clear out the area but they'll also draw aggro from the mobs. So if you're somebody who is new or maybe this is a first character that you're using and not an alt, well then hopefully this will be at least somewhat helpful. Just take it really really easy. Practice your rotation here as you're trying to learn because you're trying to catch up to speed as soon as you can and use these mobs as trained dummies to perfect your rotation. Now that you have the Broken Shore unlocked, time to start farming Nether Shards and a little bit of AP, but mostly farming item level. There are a lot of ways of doing this in Nether Shard farming, like one of them is chests. Chests can give a chance for you to get a legendary, they will always give you some form of AP, and they'll give you Nether Shards which you'll need to transfer 400 of those for a piece of gear, at least an 850 item level piece of gear that can Titan Forge. Be sure to watch out for other events on the Broken Shore because you have to have boss fights where a boss will appear with a chance for you to drop a 900 item level piece of gear as well as a ton of AP. So you're always going to be rewarded and you're always going to be progressing whether you get a piece of gear or not. Again, a great place for you to just test out your rotation and practice your specialization, seeing how much damage you can do or if you can do the rotation perfectly. You're not going to deal that much damage, but if you're taking the time to do the practice dummy stuff now, uh, then you won't have to go back to a practice dummy later. You can kind of just get caught up to everybody onto everyone's speed. Again, you don't have any gear at this point probably, so be really, really, really careful doing all the events. Now this is the main hub for the Broken Shore, here you have a couple different things. You have a command table to turn in whatever resources you gather from Broken Shore World Quest to help build one of the three buildings. You have the Mage Tower, you have the command table, and then you also have the Siphon Demon looking thing. Now, all these buildings, every time they're up, they give you various bonuses, like Mage Tower will give you more AP every time you do World Quest, or maybe it'll give you different bonuses, there's like three different bonuses that it can give you. Command table will have its own thing, the demon siphon thing will have its own thing. Here you'll also be using another charge to turn in about 400 of them to get your pieces of gear as well from some of the NPCs in the area. And you'll also have players like Khadgar, Illidan, Maev, all these guys will be giving you quests in order to help progress the story of Broken Shore as well as overall Legion story, which you will need if you let's say want to get flying or if you want to just progress the story to get different followers for your order hall. All very important and definitely get 
used and acquainted with the area. Now, let's talk about Nether Shards and why you want to get item level first things first. You have a lot of world quests, there's a lot to do, and you might be thinking, Wow, Dallin, there's so many world quests that can give me gear. This world quest might have 800, 805, 810 item levels. Why well, I want to go and do that first for gearing. It seems so easy and so simple, especially if you already have flying. Now, the reason you want to get a higher item level is because your world quest will always try to upgrade your gear. So. The highest item level that you can try to upgrade you to is about 860, but if you're a low average item level, it'll start you out with low gear upgrades, like really, really low. So if you can increase your item level and your gear while in the Broken Shore, when you go out and start doing world quests, it'll be a lot more effective for you when it comes to actually gearing and getting a higher item level. Because the world quests, they will upgrade to a gear that you'll get from Broken Isles, which is 850 item level. So the higher you can get your average item level, the closer to 850 as you can, while farming nether shards, which you can do for quite a while. There's world bosses in the area that will drop gear, or have a chance to drop gear, and nether shards, and AP. You have the chests, you have some of the world quests in the area, you also have massive bosses, and there's also sentinex farming. There's multiple ways of get, grinding the nether shards. So then you can turn in 400 of them for better gear, so then your world quests give you even better gear. So you're trying to gear yourself out, not only are you trying to get yourself to an item level around 850, but you're trying to catch up to everybody else. So the faster you can get yourself to an 850-ish item level, the faster world quests will help you gear to the 900 and plus to get you into the mythics, into the dungeons, into the raids, and even into the PvP. If you are at a point where you think you might want to try Sentinex farming, basically Sentinex farming is you'll see a demon ship over an area. You'll see it on your map, you'll see it in the sky. There's a demon ship that hovers over an area. In that area, you can go kill mobs that spawn, and those mobs will give you crystals to call down reinforcements. So you're basically coaxing the legion out so you can kill their troops, and after you kill the troops, you get nether shards from them, you have a chance to get pieces of gear from them, and you basically get in a 5 man group using the LFG function, you're looking for Sentinex farming, S-E-N-T, in most search engines, and you'll be able to just find it there. And you're trying to nuke as many mobs as you can, usually you want to find a group that has less than 5 people, because only 5 people at a time can get a tag of the mobs if you are in a party. So you want to get into a 4-man group to make it into a 5-man group with yourself added and farm as many of demons as you can. If you are a healer, then you'll probably get in faster. If you're somebody who can spec to do a lot of AoE damage to the mobs, you'll also get in a lot faster and you'll be a lot overall more effective in the area. If you are a tank, as a low-level tank, I don't think you can really do a lot. But this is probably the fastest way of getting nether shards and you'll be here farming for a while. Like, if you're planning to do this for 30 minutes, maybe an hour, then Sentinax is something definitely that's for you. It's worth. It's definitely worth, especially if you just still have just so many mobs incoming. And you'll get crystals that upgrade the different portals that come out. So the demons will be stronger, but they'll also give you better rewards. And eventually you might even get like a rare that'll come out from Sentinax farming. And you kill it and you get a lot of rewards as well. So this is definitely for the patient ones. But I feel like this is still the most effective way of getting nether shards in order to get your gear when you don't have invasions available. Back at the main hub area, you have two NPCs. The chick will be selling you gear for 400 nether shards a pop. These ones give you 850. The wrappings guy will sell them for about 5,000 a pop at a higher item level, but not worth it for the starter character. You want to catch up to 850 so then you can start doing world quests, which will allow you to do mythic dungeons and dungeons in general, which will allow you to do maybe a Lafar into normal, into heroics, or simply just jumping into PvP with a somewhat decent item level. And that's what you're looking for, you're trying to catch up to people as soon as you can, and then find better methods for faster gear, and even better item level, better quality gear. So, go to talk to that NPC, for 400 nether shards a pop, she'll give you 850 plus gear. With the little bit AP that you'll be able to farm in the Broken Shore from doing the world bosses to doing some of the world quests that give you AP, not the gear ones, save those for later, and doing some of the bosses, you should be able to put in enough AP in order to get an upgrade for your weapon. I actually was able to do that for all three of my weapons, simply from Broken Shore. And what you're doing is you're trying to unlock the extra traits. You will need to do a quest for every single one of those and all those quests will be slightly different for every single specialization. 
You may focus on one specialization or you may focus on all three of them if you wish. It all depends how much AP you end up getting from the events on Broken Shore. It's best if you just want to focus on one and just, you know, get it as fast as possible, squared away to the ability to be able to do content in the game and start getting gear, but I had enough AP to put all three in. You also want to make sure to go back to your order hall and continue doing your order hall mission if you decide to skip any of these quests at any point while leveling. I decided to skip all of mine and just power level to 110, so I had a lot of things to catch up to. So you just simply get quests from your order hall companions, do them as soon as you can, somewhere in between of farming gear and then doing your main quest for your artifact weapon. You will want to do this eventually and most of this will be a time gated thing where you go up to the message board in your order hall and you send your followers on a mission that will take maybe 30 minutes to an hour. So while that's happening for 30 minutes to an hour, you can continue farming gear or upgrading your weapon. As soon as you have an FAP and you do have all the traits unlocked, all the extra traits unlocked for your weapons and you've done the quest for them, try to unlock the four new traits that are unlocked for your specialization that will be in a circle pattern. The faster you unlock these traits, the faster you'll be able to play your specialization to its full potential. Some of these traits don't really do a lot, and a lot of them are passives that don't affect your gameplay, but for some classes and specializations, they actually affect your gameplay tremendously. So the faster you can unlock them, and the faster you can start playing with these passives and incorporating them into your rotation, the faster you can really learn the specialization and try to find applicable uses for them. So now I have progress happening on multiple fronts. I'm trying to get higher item level in order to do world quests in the rest of the zones to get better gear. I'm collecting a little bit AP here and there to progress my weapon. And I have my order hall missions being done in the background that take about 30 to about an hour to do. And I have progress happening on multiple fronts so I can continue the story of my order hall, I can gear up my character, I can gear up my weapon, and I can just have progression happen everywhere. So you want to get to that stance where there's a lot of things happening in the background, so that's where you feel the most amount of progress happening. Now I just want to give some final thoughts because I believe I covered most of everything I need to in this video, but just some of the questions and answers. Question 1. What do you do if there is an invasion happening? Well, go do the invasion. Don't even think about it. I don't care if it offers you gear. I, s I told you before that, yes, you shouldn't do any of the world quests that offers you gear because you want to wait until you hire item level before you do that. But when it comes to invasion, it gives you a higher chance to give you gear, just free. So it might be pieces that you haven't got to replace yet. It'll give you a ton of nether shards, it'll give you a ton of AP, and also allow you to practice the specialization. And they're kind of fun, and they kind of mix it up from the monotony of doing the Broken Shore and doing the Sentinex farming for literally an hour. And they're really nice, and they last for about 5 hours, so you can get a bunch of them done on all of your tunes. Definitely probably the fastest way to progress whenever they are available and up and about. So do them when you can. Question number 2. Order Hall and Missions. Why do I want to do them? The reason you want to progress the story of your Order Hall is because as you progress the story, you'll be able to get different buffs and different attunements, different upgrades for your weapon. You'll be able to unlock a third relic and that relic slot will increase the item level of your weapon. It will also allow your weapon to get a trade bonus. Let's say you want to buff one of the trades that gives you a DPS increase. So getting a third relic will be a damage increase for your specialization and there's literally no way you can get around it. You can't just choose, like I'm not gonna go and get my relic slot. That's just impossible, you have to. You, you just simply have to. Question number three, what do you do once you got a item level that you're pretty happy with? Well, once you're about item level 850, 860, you can start trying to do Mythic Plus. Start with lower keys, about 2, 3, 4, or 5, depends on the groups it'll take you. Uh, try doing LFRs. I know nobody really likes LFRs, but LFR has a chance to give you your tier pieces with your 2-piece, 4-piece bonuses. They won't be as effective as normal and heroic runs, but you still want to get them because they'll give you an increase on your gear. And then from there you can move on to normals and heroics and mythics as you get better gear while doing all your dailies and your world quests and such. And if you're somebody who PvPs, this is where you can simply just forget about getting gear and just start doing arenas because you have a good enough item level to be competitive. Start farming your honor levels, start farming for the gear that you might get from arenas and it'll kind of drop on its own. The higher your rating is in 2s and 3s, the better the gear will drop. Getting your RBGs done if you can find an RBG group is also very much helpful. So here, once you get to 850, you can kind of just choose what you want to do and decide what you want to do with the specialization. 
My last advice would be, let's say you're playing a specialization that's got all three DPS specs or whatever, or if you're somebody who wants to do a little bit of PvE but mostly a PvP player, for PvP stats don't really matter, it's all about the highest item level, but don't make the same mistake I did. When leveling my hunter and getting him to 110 and starting gearing process, I geared him for PvP, so I didn't really care about which stats I got, which legendaries I got, and I am getting like a mixture of master, crit, haste, and versatility over my stats, where I don't have any specialization that's performing better in damage. I have all three specs of survival, beastmaster, and marksman doing poorly in PvE. So now I have to do a little bit of re-gearing and restructuring, and I think I'm going to main marksmanship. But for PvE, it's good to at least main one specialization. Reason is because if you want to do content, let's say you're a PvP player, but you do want to dwell into some PvE stuff, by maining gear and legendaries into one specialization, it will at least guarantee that you'll be competitive and competent when it comes to group content. So you pull enough DPS in a raid, or maybe pull enough AoE damage for Mythic Plus, so you can help your groups get better keys and progress in overall. And that's something I would, of course, definitely guarantee you guys to do. It doesn't even matter which spec you are playing. And by the way, here are the DPS numbers for TOS charts. Let's say you're somebody who plays, let's say a Frost Death Knight, and they're pretty low on the table. Even if you're a Frost DK, and you decide to gear yourself for Frost DK in terms of gear, I know you're not doing too much damage in the raid environment, because that raid is mostly single target and you're better at cleaves, but still by gearing yourself up for Frost, at least you fill in a niche market. As a Frost DK, you'll still be able to be invited to raise and do well in damage, especially if you learn your rotation and perfect it and get better at it, you'll still be able to get higher numbers than a person that simply does not know how to play their class. And in Epithic Plus, you'll be invited because of the massive AoE damage and cleave potential and CC that you bring. So every class and every spec fills in that niche group when it comes to damage. And within Raiding Charts, Mythic Plus, at least you have one specialization that you can play with. And you might not be the top of the damage, but at least you're helpful and useful to your team. That's what is most important. At least now you can do content. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. This is how I gear up all of my alts, and this is what I've been doing for the last few alts. I was able to bring my hunter along, I was able to bring my warlock along, and uh, my druid, and I'm still thinking of doing more classes like maybe paladin, ret and I'm thinking of doing a holy DK, and I definitely want to bring up an Ellie slash enhanced shaman. Still not sure which spec I want to main. But thank you guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.